to left center field. Back it goes and gone. The 0-2 pitch. He struck him out, swinging at 101. Swing and a drive, left field and deep. Back it goes and gone. And the Twins walk it off again. It is Friday, which means at 9.35, we visit with the voice of the Minnesota Twins on Valley Sports North. Mr. Corey Provis joins us as the Twins, after an off day, first day off in two weeks, now are back to the grind tonight. The Cincinnati Reds are at target field. Rare appearance for the Reds as uh, they open up a three-game set. Twins got some good news yesterday without even playing. Cleveland lost. The Tigers lost. As we're at that time of the year, so when, when teams are around you or ahead of you and losing and you don't play that's a good day right i mean the twins playoff odds i think entering tuesday morning were like 67 percent, and now they're back over 80 because <laughs> they've won and teams chasing them have lost and with that you're knocking days off the calendar yep. i mean so just the math is in is in your favor now that can change in a heartbeat you lose tonight everybody else wins and then those playoff odds swing back in a different direction but you know, set up for a, a good weekend here in Cincinnati, struggling under 500. Twins have done great against sub-500 teams. That's not been the problem at, at any point this season. They've been good in that regard and have three more chances to add to those numbers tonight. Let's go back to last weekend, the frustration that Rocco Baldelli had. I mean, it was – is non-competitive too strong a term, or was that accurate what you saw the three games in Kansas City? Flat non-competitive I think those are fine to mm -hmm. throw out there I, I just keep going back to the fact that the twins were playing poorly because they they don't have they didn't have their team and I think that's what I, I just go back to is that it'd be one thing if they were fully healthy and they were struggling then there would be a lot more concern to me if they had Correa and Buxton and Kepler and they had Joe Ryan and they were struggling then I'd be, what's going on here? There might be something bigger than we than we know of, but you're only going to go so long with that current group that they have yeah. because it's too young. I mean, they've had it. They've had it. You know, dig into their minor league system, and it's a good system. Don't get me wrong; that's great. But you want to add a piece here and there. You want to bring up five guys. <laughs> you know, that was not the plan to have. I don't think Michael Hellman and Deshaun Kersey Jr. Look at all the high numbers the Twins are throwing out there. They've got guys, uniform number 74, <laughs> yeah. 82, 86, 92. You see that in spring training. Yes, correct. And you may see a guy or two, but to have four of those guys in the lineup at the same time for a contending team, mind you, that's not the norm. Right. That's not how you plan to play it out. So that, to me, is what it goes back to. They're starting to get healthier here. They need to get healthy now. You know, Manuel Margot is back. He's had his faults. Don't get me wrong, but he's very good hitting leadoff against left-handed pitching. That's been something they've been missing in his absence. Byron Buxton is back tonight. He does he does the team wonders. Just an, a bolt of energy that will be obvious uh, in the dugout on the field with his return tonight. Let's just start with that because I think last week when we were chatting, the news seemed ominous, and then it turned over the last few days. What can you tell us about Buxton and, and him getting back on the field? I mean, he did not want to go to Columbus. I'll say that. I mean, he was not being shy about yeah. his about his feelings about I the, the rehab thing, and I tried it last week. Yep. Uh, uh not happening. So what the Twins did, maybe you saw this down. The Twins brought up four yep. minor league pitchers, two from Cedar Rapids, two from Fort Myers, and then they spent the last few days throwing to the injured players that Buxton and Correa and Kepler and Margot. They saw live pitching uh, from a professional arm. They didn't know what was coming. It wasn't like, hey, fastball wasn't like spring oh. training. They know what's coming. They, they didn't know what was coming and react and, and go. So that was good enough for Buxton. I'm not sure if that's good enough for Correa, though. He has not played a game since before the All-Star break. I don't know how that plays. Yeah. Out. I think Kepler, I could see him coming back without a rehab, but Correa, to me, is the one to watch. Um but St. Paul's out of town. I mean, is Correa, if we find out today that Correa's, you know, going to join Columbus and play Saturday and Sunday and then meet us Monday in Cleveland, or does he wait and he meets us in Boston? I don't know. Yeah. Does he meet us in Boston when the Saints are home next week? And then I, I couldn't tell you. So 
Rocco said all along that Correa was going to need a rehab. But have those feelings changed now that we're this late into the season? The minor league season wraps up a week from uh, six days. Yeah. You know, Thursday <laughs> is the last home game for the Saints and the last game of their season. So time is winding down for these guys to actually go play somewhere in the organization. Yeah, that just seems – I don't know. He sounded more upbeat when he spoke to the media. Correa I'm talking about uh, a couple days ago. Just that – you and I have been around the bend on this. That it seems like the last two months since he's been out about where where he's going to go, and now they're, he's running out of time to play games. I just that would seem like a, a a tall task to come back and and play in meaningful baseball without getting any sort of reps before that. And he's not going to DH. My understanding is yep. he's not going to DH. That he's going to need to play shortstop. Uh. So <laughs> okay, let's yeah. test out that foot and let's test out yep. the agility and then the movement, the lateral movement, uh, straight line running that you need to have i mean he's really good I mean, he's yep. a great player great shortstop great hitter but if he can't feel his position then what what good is he yep. to have out there you but you might see more brooks lee than you will correa if he can't move and but he seems to be progressing in a way like you said uh different treatment program he flew out to california uh for a treatment program while the team was on the road so I, I, he feels like they, they turned a corner here a little bit. And so his return seems like it's happening. But, I, again, I don't know if it's happening yeah. in lieu of a rehab assignment or still following a rehab assignment at some point with the Saints. Now, as we look ahead here, finally they got some production from Royce Lewis and Brooks Lee in the game uh, on Wednesday. Badly needed for the both of them. I know you were – uh, discussing that in the broadcast and it, it's funny in baseball where it go dry forever and then in one and then it could, the, the spray can turn on like it did on Wednesday night they needed it yeah. and it was it was you know I, we're really careful and I am too about throwing out around must win I think that's a bad that's a bad recipe because then it's just <laughs> if you say today is a must win then what does that mean 10 days from now I, I, but I thought Tuesday was pretty close to it I thought Tuesday was yeah was pushing that that limit that this is this is a vital, vital game to have. And they did with Pablo on the mound and the offense erupted for 10 and then a, a tighter game for a while there on Wednesday. And seeing Royce especially come up with that swing for a second to look like another grand slam, but still would take a two run double at that point. He needed that. Um, Brooks Lee had some had some better cuts. These guys are playing more baseball than they ever have before as pros. And just in terms of the length of the season, in terms of injury that they've dealt with, and that's catching up to them. I yeah. think it's also catching up to even some of the more veteran players. Willie Castro is playing more than he ever has yep. before. His second half has been quiet. He's not alone. There's a bunch of guys right now that are being asked to do something they had not done before. And physically, mentally, it's new. And it's been a challenge. And it's hard. It's hard for some. Other guys seem to be doing fine with it. Trevor Larnick, Matt Walner, these guys are pushing themselves, and these guys are everyday players, and and they've been great. With the series, I'm going to get ahead of ourselves here. With the series with Cleveland, with as much, few games that are left, is in your mind is the division still in play? I, obviously, they'd have to sweep in my mind to still have a chance. In your mind, is it still in play, or is it now wild card or bust? I think it's unlikely. I mean, I think, is it mathematically plausible? Sure. Um, at minimum, minimum, yeah, sweep three out of four just to make it interesting yeah. here. I, but that's if you take care of business this weekend and, you know, the Twins got some help last night with Tampa Bay beating Cleveland. Yeah. Fine. But it's still mathematically possible. But remember, the Twins lose the tiebreaker to Cleveland. So the five and a half deficit is really six and a half because if they finish tied then Cleveland based on the head to head season series, they won the season series against the twins, no matter what happens, even if the twins take all four, they yeah. still lose the season series with the guardians. So it's not just the, 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 the games back in the standings, but you have to add one more to that. So it's to me, the division unlikely at this point. And then, yeah, I think the wild card is certainly going to be more plausible for this team, but yeah, why not give it your best? See what happens. Maybe get some help along the way. Uh, but it, it, it's, it's certainly a long shot to win the division at this point. The wild card is fascinating, Corey, to see how it plays out behind Minnesota watching Detroit. We talked about them last week. Boston seems to have, they're just muddling around. Seattle's hanging around there. Is, is Detroit the scariest team? And they don't play the twins the rest of the way in your mind. 
Detroit, that was a big one they lost yesterday yeah. because that was a ter- that was a Tarek Skubal start. And Skubal, I think, is going to win the Cy Young Award that they probably look at it like, hey, all these games left, we can't lose a Skubal start. And they lost a Skubal start to, yesterday. To so the that, Rockies, too. To, to the Rockies at Ugh. home. And now they got they got Baltimore coming to their place this weekend. Tough team. They still play another series with Kansas City. Yep. So, yeah, th- th- that was that was a big one that the, that the Tigers dropped yesterday. And going back to the whole tiebreaker thing that I was talking about with Cleveland, the Twins have the tiebreaker over Detroit. So, again, the Tigers are looking at that at their deficit the same way the Twins are looking at their deficit with the Guardians, that you have to have at least one more win in in the column there to, to just even break that tiebreaker. So that that's kind of – I thought yesterday was a big one for the Tigers – Twins were idle. They got some help, but losing a school start, yeah. I thought was, was vital yesterday. Is it too early for us to start looking at matchups? Are you doing that? Like, okay, it, right now it'd be Twins Astros. That, that they yeah. match up better than that than Twins Orioles, if that were to be the case. I mean, I, I have done that. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to lie that I've that I've looked at it. Are you better <laughs> off being if you're a wild card team, you being being a six seed as opposed to the five seed? The five seed is going to go to the loser uh, in the AL East race, either New York or Baltimore. Um, but I, I also remember that the Astros now have Yusei Kikuchi. Yeah. And so that's a, another left-handed arm. They have Frommer, they have Kikuchi, and Verlander. I, I know he's not had a good year. He's still Justin Verlander. He's yep. a Hall of Famer, postseason, you name it, saw it last year. So it's not going to be easy. I mean, the Twins have won there. They have. Jose Altuve hurt his right side last night, or a couple nights ago, and he's, he said it's okay. He's going to try his day-to-day, but that's a bad injury. That, that anything intercostal oblique that they say is minor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That that's one that's one to watch here with the Astros here the next few days. Let's break. We come back with Corey's thoughts on the Reds and then match it up with Cleveland for next week. Back is Corey's appearances brought to us always by Weldon's Tire Service. We'll wrap up our one of Hot Mike right after this. Wrapping up Hour 1, back with Corey Provis. His appearances brought to us by Welton's Tire Service. Twins and the Reds coming up from Target Field tonight, 7 o'clock on Valley Sports North. This is one of those teams, Cincinnati, as a National League fan, seeing them last year, like, boy, they, they've they got some young pieces. They've got Hunter Green, who's a tremendous pitcher. Uh, they're coming, and then the injury bug has killed them this year, Corey, that they're, they're under 500 and going to miss the playoffs this year. Yeah, I'm with you because we saw them late last year. It's yeah. funny that we're seeing them now in back-to-back years around the same time within the last you know week week and a half of the season. So Cincinnati, yeah, they, they don't miss the playoffs under 500, but crushed by injuries this yeah. season. Just absolutely demolished by injuries, especially with their starting staff, the five starters that they began the season with, all on the IL right now or traded. Frankie Montas is now in Milwaukee. So yeah, won't see Hunter Green at all in this series. So they're beat up. Um they've they've got a ton of youth. And in many ways it's it's probably comparable to some of the decisions roster construction the Twins were forced to make because of injury really dipping into their farm system uh prematurely. Mm. Um is what they've had, they've been forced to do. Sunday I'm looking forward to seeing Sunday starter. His name is Rhett Lauder. And he was a high pick in 2022. He was the second pitcher drafted after the Pirates took Paul Skeens mm. um, from LSU. So I'm excited to see Louder, um, a young, promising, I think, potential frontline arm. So he'll go on Sunday in the series finale. But, yeah, Cincinnati, still Ellie De La Cruz is yeah. going to be at the ballpark this weekend. He has more stolen bases, 64 himself, than the Twins do as a team, 63. <laughs> So th- this is this is his game. Oh, uh, he's been slumping here a little bit, but that's what I love about this new look schedule, Dom. Mm-hmm. Is that every other year, this kind of talent, you know, comes to town. And we saw that with the Braves. We saw that with the Cardinals. We saw that with other teams earlier in the year, the Dodgers, of course. And now we get to see Ellie De La Cruz for three days. Pretty special for people that don't follow the National League or especially the National League Central. You do. Uh, what makes him such a? Is it his speed? What it makes him such an electric player? Because I remember last year when he came on the scene and was just a month where you could not miss him at the plate. But he was everything because yeah. he's five tool. I mean, he's everything. He's power, speed, you name it. Now he strikes out a ton. 
he does strike out, but he's got, you know, he's got a great arm. He checks a lot of the boxes defensively and the speed. If he's on base, don't move. I mean, don't, <laughs> don't go get a drink. Don't leave your seat. Don't flip the channel. If you're watching this weekend, just this is going to be a challenger because he's going to end up not just second. He's going to be a third in a span of about three pitches. I mean, he's going to go. Yeah. And he knows that, hey, they know I'm going, but try to beat me. Try to get me. And, you know, 64 stolen bases is, is pretty is pretty remarkable. Spencer Steer drive uh, Twins fans crazy to see him back? I'm sure that – I'm sure those that especially study the yeah, farm system – And know that. – understand it. But, you know, that one – that trade didn't work out. No. Nope. You can't debate that. But, you know, remember that the Twins traded Chase Petty for Sonny Gray. Correct. And Chase Petty was a, was a first-round pick a couple of years ago. And no regrets about that trade. Uh, you know, Chase Petty's working his way up the minor league system. He's dealt with some injury, too. But I thought Sonny was incredible. So I had no regrets with that one. But, yeah, Spencer Steer and – Christian Encarnacion Strand, he's been banged up. Won't see him in this series, but all in the, in the Tyler Malley trade. Yeah, that one didn't work. Um, and I wonder, you know, the, the Twins haven't done much since then. Yeah. Since those trades, the, the Jorge Lopez trade, not great with Baltimore. The Tyler Malley trade with the Reds, not great there. Haven't done much since. But even saying that, and the Twins lost some young, talented players, it didn't completely decimate the farm system. The Twins have the second, you know, third, fourth, depending on which publication. They have a top four, top two farm system right now in the game. So we can remember those trades that did not work, and boy, gave up some players fine, but it didn't set the organization back 10 years yeah. because they've done a good job building up the farm system, even though those picks and those trades did not go their way. I got to ask you before we let you go on Matt Walner, what he's done. I mean, it's see every time, and I know I think we've talked about this in the past. I'm sure we have. When he hits the ball, it's just scalded. It just it just goes. Why the turnaround, or not even turnaround, but why the the last two weeks, Corey? He's just been on fire at the plate. It just I think it's better pitch recognition. I don't think he's chasing as much. I think he's putting himself in more favorable counts. Where when he was struggling in April. Dom, the at bat was over in three pitches. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was good morning, good afternoon, good night. It was just three pitches, and his his at bat was over, and that was it. Where now we're seeing some two zero counts, some two one counts, because he's not chasing as much. And you're right, when he makes contact, it goes. And there's a couple of times that I've even been fooled by it that <laughs> it almost looks like a half swing, one handed swing, and the ball. <laughs> That thing is still going. That thing's got <laughs> some pretty good backspin on it, and it bangs off the wall. Yeah. And I thought, uh, maybe a routine fly out to right center. Um, Rocco paid him a high compliment the other day, saying that he is showing signs of being very durable because he gets hit by pitches. He worked at, at a dairy farm as a kid. Um, and so he, I asked Matt about that on, on Caravan. He said, you know, people think that I get up all these pitches. I don't break bones. It's like, I got strong bones. I drank my milk as a kid. I'm like, he sounds like Hulk Hogan. Uh, <laughs> you know, well, one of the Hulksters kind of the saying is, you know, drink your milk, yep. say your prayers, all that stuff. I'm like, this guy sounds like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> so he's been very durable where other guys, Rocco sees like, and we mentioned this earlier that some of these younger guys, they're kind of running out of gas here. Walner, yep. Larnick, they're not. These guys are playing, playing well. And without them, this team is probably – not in the, in the position that they're in. I think Willie Castro a month and a half ago, two months ago, would have been the overwhelming pick for the team MVP. It's not him anymore. I would probably give it to Carlos Santana at this point. He's leading the team in home runs. I think he's going to win a gold glove at first base. He's been consistent outside the first three weeks when everybody stunk. He has been, he has been I think, the most consistent player. But Pablo, Matt Walner. Yeah, you're not too far behind. And mm. Trevor Larnick, not too far behind when I think about you know the MVP of this team. But right now, I'd go with Santana. That ball he hit, by the way, out of the plaza, I know you've been there for a lot. That was one of the furthest I've ever seen at Target Field. That was a bomb. Yeah, I mean, Morty said that's Tommy territory. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's right. I mean, that's, you know, Tommy for a long time, you know, this was pre-StatCast, you know, the home run he hit off Matt Thornton that hit off the, the flagpole. That was the longest home run in Target Field history. I've seen, I, I just, using my eyes, I think I've, I've seen some that have gone into that restaurant in center field. Yep. 
but Walner almost put in that, you know, out by Killebrew statue, um, you know, outside the gate. I mean, yeah, th that was, that was unbelievable power. And when he goes out to right center, especially, I mean, he's got incredible bat speed and power and it's been on display. And I like that he's hitting second. He's yeah. been hitting second yep. here a little bit. You know, Rocco's kind of moved Larnick and Walner around a little bit that he's got. And it wouldn't shock me tonight if we see, you know, Julian, Walner, Buxton, Larnick. Mm. Because then you go, you get some switch hitters, yeah. you get some right left in there. Then I think that's how you separate Larnick and Walner, or in this case, Walner and Larnick. Mm. And I think maybe Buck in the three spot tonight with uh, Julian leading off. You're the man. Have a great call this weekend. Uh, the Sunday's game is on Roku, correct? Sunday at uh, noon. I'll okay. be on that call with uh, with Jeff Brantley and Audra at uh, noon on the Roku channel. Awesome. Have a great week, bud. We'll see you next week, all right? Thanks, Tom. Be good. Corey Provis, voice of the Minnesota Twins on Bally Sports North. His appearance is brought to us each and every Friday by Welton's Tire Service at Elizabeth. We appreciate their sponsorship. Twins and the Reds coming up tonight, 7 o'clock. We'll have more on the other stories surrounding the Twins organization. If you missed that, uh, we'll hit that in our second hour. It is beyond belief. we got to share that one. We'll break. We come back. Second hour on tap. You'll hear from Bison wide receiver coach Steve Crutchley about the breakout game his wide receivers had and what's in store this weekend on this Football Friday. Hour two begins right after this.